In northern Gaza, children clutch empty pots and buckets, awaiting food at this street kitchen. The man in charge says they've run out of essentials, rice and sugar, in a region where the UN says they're dying from hunger. People are hungry. It's been four or five months without any aid. Everyone has lost weight and the children are suffering from malnutrition and sickness. The thirst is killing us, the starvation is killing us and the poverty is killing us. In an unprecedented move to increase aid, President Biden will tonight announce the creation of a port by the US military on Gaza's coast. Nowhere near enough support is getting to northern Gaza, with airdrops insufficient and the World Food Programme saying a convoy of 14 aid trucks were turned away by the Israelis this week. More would reach Palestinians if there was a ceasefire, but American hopes of a deal by Ramadan look bleak, leaving the people of Gaza mired in war amidst a looming famine. And with the families of the more than 100 Israeli hostages still waiting for their loved ones to return. How you can sleep at night? Look at us. Look at them. All the time. Keep them in the top of the agenda. In London today, the hostage families called on the government to bring them home. But as they spoke, talks with Hamas in Egypt came to an end with no ceasefire deal that would have freed some of the hostages in exchange for a pause in fighting and the release of Palestinian prisoners. We believe that it would only release about 40 hostages within six weeks. Would that be something that you would be in favour of, even though it would mean not all of the hostages being returned? If we see someone come back, it's good for us. If someone, only one now come inside to Israel, we know that we have hope. This is what we need. We need hope. In Israel, while a majority support the war, many are growing angry at Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He's been criticised for his conduct during the war. And at a rally last week, Benny Gantz, a member of the war cabinet and a Netanyahu rival, joined the hostage families. And this week, he travelled to Washington and London, as allies are getting frustrated with Netanyahu, who today said Israel would launch an offensive on Rafah, despite calls for him not to do so. There is international pressure and it's growing, but when the pressure rises, we must close ranks. We need to stand together against attempts to stop the war. That rhetoric will not please Washington, with officials concerned about the wider region. Yesterday, Yemen's Houthis attacked another ship in the Gulf of Aden, killing three people. Back in Gaza, the situation is desperate. A scrap of cardboard is used to get every last bit of flour. Tonight's announcement from Biden about a military port is perhaps a sign of the Americans losing patience with the Israelis. But that help from the sea is still weeks away, and the people of northern Gaza are starving right now. Well, let's get more now from our Washington correspondent, Siobhan Kennedy. Siobhan. Well, I think Kieran is right. This is a sign of rising tensions between the US and Israel. We know that America has tried to uh, persuade, to force Israel to let more aid in, but it simply believes now that Israel is not doing enough to meet that demand. So we are told tonight that the president will use his all-important State of the Union speech there in that building behind me to announce that he is directing US military to carry out what they are calling an emergency mission, to build an actual new port in the Mediterranean on the Gaza coast to allow for the, uh, to receive large ships into that port, carrying food, water, medicine, emergency uh, shelters, and to transfer them via a new uh, causeway, a pier into Gaza. This is obviously hugely significant uh, news because it will allow for much more aid to get into Gaza. The US is estimating that up to hundreds of trucks a day will now be able to bring aid in. It does, of course, bring the US uh, much closer to the war than it probably ever wanted to be. But a, a White House official assured us reporters uh, that that did not, did not mean that there, uh, that there would be any need for US boots on the ground in Gaza. At least that is what it is saying now. It does say much, though, of course, that the US is having to resort 
to this. This is not a hostile uh, government it's dealing with, after all. It's Israel, one of its closest allies, and yet seemingly the US does not have the uh, sway to uh, force Israel to do its bidding. Uh, I should still point out, though, that at the same time that it's planning not just these airdrops, but now this new uh, maritime aid, that it is still providing weapons and missiles to Israel to carry out its operations inside Gaza. That Indeed. is where we are at.